Welcome to this lesson on gas laws. Question of the day. What is the relationship between pressure and volume, volume and temperature, and temperature and pressure? The first gas law that we are going to take a look at is the relationship between pressure and volume. Robert, I think his name was, Robert Boyle, he came up with the equation, the, the specific mathematical relationship between pressure and volume. We already knew that when pressure increases, it means that volume had to shrink, or when volume shrinks, pressure goes up. Um, but Robert, I think Boyle, is the guy who came up with the mathematical relationship for that. Um, he did an experiment, he got some numbers, put it on a graph, and this is what he came up with. So the pressure times the volume of the before situation is going to be equal to the pressure times the volume of the after situation. So I, a lot of the time, um, like to use an A and a B, a before and after. Some teachers like a one and a two. Other people like a final and an initial as the little label down here. Um, I know a lot of people don't like one and two in the equation because you think that you may have to like do a calculation with that number. That is just the, the describing term. So that could be... Um, situation one and situation two, or the before and the after, or the final and the initial, whatever it is. Um, the little subscript there is just to describe the situation. So in this case, the pressure times the volume before is equal to the pressure times the volume after, and this relationship will be true at a constant temperature. Volume and temperature is a little bit different. As the volume goes up, so does the temperature. As the temperature goes up, so does the volume. Flip the arrows upside down, that is also true. But this relationship is true at a constant pressure. So the volume divided by the temperature before will be equal to the volume divided by the temperature after. And this was discovered by, I think, a French guy. I don't remember his first name. <laughs> then we have Gay-Lussac's law, which I don't know if this is one guy with a hyphenated name or if it's two guys. Couldn't tell you. As the pressure of a gas increases, the temperature must also be increasing. And this relationship is mathematically right here. The pressure divided by the temperature before is equal to the pressure divided by the temperature after. You can change either of these um, variables and cross multiply to figure out what is going on. So the relationship is true here at a constant volume. The reason I don't know much about the scientists who came up with the individual pieces is because I use always the combined gas law, which is taking all three of those gas laws together. The pressure times the volume divided by the temperature of the before situation is equal to the pressure times the volume divided by the temperature of the after situation. Now, if you were to hold any of these variables constant, let's say we have the same temperature. The temperature is the same for the entire experiment. It's 273 Kelvin. If that is true, mathematically, we would plug in 273 over here and 273 over here. Well, that means the entire, on both sides of the equation, we're dividing by 273. So we can just eliminate that from the equation. Um, so if you eliminate that from the equation, then you would have Boyle's law where you have the relationship between pressure and volume. If you hold any of these constant, um, you can remove it from the equation and you will be left with one of the individual gas laws. That's why I don't use any of the individual gas laws um, because I don't remember whose name is what. Uh, I just use a combined gas law and when I have something constant, I just pull that from the equation, which would leave me with the respective individual gas law. Potentially the most important part of the combined gas law is noting that the denominator of this equation is temperature. And you should remember from math class that we don't like to divide by zero. You can't do it. It breaks the equation. So if the temperature is zero, your equation will break. So for that reason, um, in order to eliminate that possibility and to eliminate the possibility of having to work in negative Celsius temperatures, we switch everything over to Kelvin. You can switch your temperature over to Kelvin from Celsius by adding 273. Unlikely that you would go the opposite direction unless your um, question specifically asked to report in Celsius. More than likely you would have your Celsius and add 273 to convert that over to Kelvin. We'll get into the details of this a little bit later, but it is important to note that 
gases are not that special. Um, it does not matter the identity of the gas. So you could have argon or helium, doesn't matter. If you have one mole of that gas, it will occupy 22.4 liters of space, meaning that gas has a molar volume. Every gas has a, or every compound even, every element has a molar mass. When you have one mole of that substance, it will have a particular mass. But if you have a mole of gas, that gas will occupy 22.4 liters of space. If you were to have two moles of gas, you would have 44.8 liters of space occupied by those two moles of gas. This will come into play a lot in a little bit, um, but it is important to note that um, the volume of a gas doesn't change based on what the gas is. It could be hydrogen, nitrogen, methane, krypton, carbon dioxide, really doesn't matter. Um, one mole of gas, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gas particles will take up 22.4 liters of space. That bit on molar volume brings us into Dalton's law of partial pressures. Because the volume of a gas does not depend on the identity, the pressure does not either. So if you have a container of gases that don't react together, um, so in, in this particular situation, they're inert, uh, the pressures that ex are exerted by those gases, if you add them all up together, um, you will have the sum of all of the gases. So I, this is, it's kind of hard to explain because it is somewhat simple. If let's say you had um, nitrogen and nitrogen's pressure was 78.1 kilopascals and you have oxygen at 20.9 kilopascals and they're in the same container, they don't like to react with each other. They make up most of our atmosphere and they don't react with each other. Um, you can just add those two pressures together to get the pressure of the entire container. It sounds simple because it is <laughs> very simple, but it, it is true that if you have unreacting gases and they're at different pressures and they're all in the same container, well, they, they're going to add up to a higher pressure. So we can have, in addition to the nitrogen and oxygen, we can have water at 128, argon at 0.97, carbon dioxide at 0.05, add all of that together, and we have our atmosphere, which comes in at 101.3 kilopascals. So Dalton's law of partial pressure um, will be more important a little later as we get into using the specific gas laws. Um, not so much the combined gas laws. Um, I mean, you could just add pressures. So if you had a situation where you had nitrogen and oxygen and they were at individual pressures, you could add them together to get the pressure of the mixture. And then you could take that whole pressure and put it into one of the combined gas law equations. It can certainly get more complex than what is listed here, but for the purposes of high school chemistry, it does seem very simple. That's really all for this lesson. The only practice that you may want is on um, doing these calculations and using the equations, but it is just algebra skills. It is important to note that these equations largely are fractions and you can only solve these if you are missing only one variable. Um, and then again, if you have a constant or a variable that's held constant, rather you would remove that from the equation. So if you were to use the entire combined gas law, you would need five values to solve for the sixth, or two of these variables would be held constant, so they are eliminated, leaving you with four, and then you would have to know three of them to solve for the final one. Um, and then to solve these, you just cross multiply and solve for the missing variable. It's important to be mindful of your units. Um, to use these, the units just have to be the same on both sides. So for pressure, you could use atmospheres or kilopascals. Uh, there's no need to convert your pressure. Volume is also the same. You could use milliliters or liters. It just needs to be the same on both sides. The temperature does need to be in Kelvin though. So it's important to be mindful of that when you are doing calculations. And aside from that, it's just a calculator and ready, set, go. Leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye.